Welcome back to the Team Solomon Circus Live Duel. Down on the left side here, we have Josh playing his, you know, first place branded, or not branded, Bestial Dragon Link deck profile here, you know, going crazy. And then we have second place, uh, Jason over here playing Cash Jira. This is going to be a very good duel, hopefully, you know. Both players are very, very good. We see them both topping the last uh, regionals. I'm going first and second place correspondingly. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You know, it helps the channel a lot. Let me know what you think is going to win uh, in the comment section here. And, well, let's dive in. We're going to see some high rolls. And then we're going to see that Cash Deer is going to choose to go first or second here. And we're going to be seeing Jason put the, the life points onto the, the zone so we can all see it there. We do see an evenly matched in the main deck, as well as a Gamma. Actually, we're going to see... Uh, we're going to see Bistil's going to go first here. Actually, in the uh, Chaos Space pitching the Nibiru. A very good card against Kashira, unless they go for that uh, that Dryden pass. Searching for the Collapse cert, and we're going to see the effect of Collapse. Actually, in the effect of Banishing the Nibiru. It's crazy how these cards are still running around. And then we're going to be linking away into the Pisti. Activating the effect of the Black. Search for the White. Activating White, Banishing the Black. And summoning itself out. We're going to have to play Chaos Space, you know, put it back to the bottom of the deck and be able to draw a card. You know, it's crazy. Like, this is like a pretty much a plus two. And we're going to be able to link summon into the Romulus, activate the effect of white, searching for black, and Romulus is going to search for the Dragon Ravine as well. Like, crazy. We just went like plus four right there. And then you can just use the uh, the white as a discard. So we're going to see a normal summon of a red MD link off into the striker dragon. We're going to see the red MD effects. We're going to be able to search for the actual red MD. I keep saying red MD, but it's actually just middle dragon. We're going to be banishing the pisty to summon itself out. Activating the effect, summoning out the metal dragon. We're going to activate the dragon ravines. We're going to be able to pitch, the, uh, pitch that white, dump the lubelion. Then we're going to see the lubelion going to be tagging out. We're going to see the Rebellion effect going to activate, uh, making that Branded Beast onto the field, linking away the Romulus and the Metal Dragon for the seals. And then we're able to activate the effect, searching for a second copy of the Red MD there. You know, we see a seals pass, but now we see a seals Rebellion pass. I don't know who, who keeps picking up this extra deck looking through it, but uh, I don't even know why. We're going to see the Jason's going to start off and go battle phase. Going to activate the effects of evenly match. We're going to see a chain of seals here. Um, and then we're going to be seeing them summon out the Magnumut. Magnumut effects going to activate there. And then we're going to be able to search during the end phase. And we still have Branded Beast live, which is pretty crazy. Just need to get rid of one card, which is pretty, uh, pretty broken. And actually, he activated the seals to bounce back. Um, he's going to summon out the Fenrir. He's going to get beasted, pop. And we're going to see the activation of the Theosis. And we have no monsters on the field. You know what that means? means time to, for Josh to pull out that Gamma from his sleeve. Plant's going to get Ash Blossomed there. We're going to set two cards and just pass on it. End phase, we're going to see the Chaos Dragon Levy near in that beautiful ultimate rare. I'm going to be searched off the Magnumut and just going to pass his turn. Two set cards. We're going to see Chaos Levy. It's going to be activated here, banishing a Dark and Lights. Just gonna get impermed. Kind of the same thing though, so it's all right. I miss playing Levy. I, this card was gorgeous when I first picked it up. One of my first ultis, to be honest. A little bit of history there. We're gonna see the effect of Lubelion being activated. You know, getting the search for that Magnumut, and then we're gonna be tagging out for the uh, the Chaos. Tagging out Chaos. Summon out the. Um, Lubelion, and then we're going to activate the effect, so putting that regained onto the field, which is a busted card. We're going to activate the Magnumut to summon itself out by banishing the Metal Dragon, then we're going to be activate the effect of 
the regained here, putting it back, and then being able to draw a card, as well as Magnum, I can be able to search during the end phase. And then we're going to be normal summon a safer tier. Might be where we'll battle phase, just whack, and then uh, maybe just go for seals pass. We're going to see the effect of uh, Bistil, whatever it's called, safer to, uh, being popped pop the back row which is a preparation and then we're going to be able to see the uh chaos dragon being added back and just, you know summon itself out and then swing for game there so going into game two we did see dragons being able to take the uh the win game one you know the stop house and we didn't even see that gamma from his sleeve we do see a book of moon in the side deck as well which is kind of cool i think i always love seeing josh play like he's a great player. He always comes up with innovational decks. Like his theories are always, um, not, I don't want to say ahead of the curve, but like just being, I guess, the curb. Um, like I know when he like first came out with Math Mech, it was like a sleeper deck that I didn't see online at all anywhere. Um, I saw like some people obviously testing it and stuff, but like it just he came with it with so swiftness. You know, like that regionals was just like OP. Um, like it just, it comes out of nowhere. It's like all these decks are always like so well bought out, um, or thought out, not thought out, I should say. And like, he's always playing into dragons. Like there's just so many stuff that I just don't even know about the, uh, the dragon link deck that he's playing currently. Like so many just weird builds. Like we saw Axel Synchron, like the weekend that came out and you know, yeah, now it's going to be a huge combo like in the future with the, um, the cybernetic horizon. Or cybernetic, whatever the next set is. That's already a that's an old set. Um, but like we're gonna be seeing that with the super heavy samurais, but just like it's just cool stuff like that. Um, that we were able to see from Josh, always ready to innovate. And like Dragon Tears was absolutely busted deck, like in tier element format. That no one really was playing, I guess. But we're gonna be going into game two here. We're gonna be seeing Jason gonna start off banishing the th six cards, I would assume. He is on the double Zeus. He's going to be able to, uh, to reveal six. Not going to hit with that Ash. We're going to see Ash, Nibiru, uh, Rise Heart, and two Solemn Judgments, as well as a uh, another Prosperity. And they're going to choose the uh, Solemn Judgment there without ease. It's not as good when your opponent doesn't know you have Solemn Judgment. Like, searching is kind of, like, weird. Um, we're going to see a special one out of the Arise Heart. Or not Arise Heart, of Fenrir. What am I saying? Activating the effect here. Probably searching for the Arise Heart. Um, we do see a Gamma in the hand, though. Going to take a second to look at his extra deck. Before he lets that go through, maybe you just hit it with the gamma or you wait till the next one. Then you know you're getting your monster banished, but you don't really care either. No, he's just going to hit it with the gamma right away. Getting rid of that body on the field, that's kind of crazy to me. Stopping the effect to be able to search. You know, maybe praying he doesn't have a unicorn or anything like that as well. You know, birth, unicorn and birth would like be really hard here. We are going to see a second Fenrir being summoned. We're going to activate the Theosis there. No Ash Blossom. So we're going to summon out the Unicorn. Unicorn effects can be able to activate. Searching for that birth. And then we're going to be playing the birth. Birth effects going to summon out the Fenrir once again. And uh, we're going to hard make the Arise Heart here. And then going for that Dryden's macro pass with the two sets as well. And then we'll be able to equip the Entis onto the Arise Heart there. We do see a Book of Moon in the hands of Josh, though. So he doesn't look like he's going to be too afraid of the Arise Heart. But does he have anything engraved? You know, that's the biggest thing with these Bistils. There's sometimes you just have hands where he's just going to pass on that. Knowing he's not going to be able to be OTK'd, he also has the Nibiru. I feel like you just set the Book of Moon just in case, right? We're going to see the uh, summon out of the Ogre. Ogre is going to activate the effects to be able to search for the Trap card here.
then switch the Arise Heart into Attack. Um, this is not even close enough for game as well. You're going to go battle phase and you're going to be swinging with both of them there. And then they will be able to look at the top five cards of the deck and organize, which is going to be kind of rough. Probably not thinking he's going to get an ogre there. Um, I guess he doesn't get to organize, he gets to get rid of. So you're going to get rid of the chaos space, probably not wanting his opponent to be able to. Um, now you're going to get rid of the safer. I guess you don't want to get rid of the chaos space, hoping his opponent doesn't have anything in the hand. We personally know he has Nibiru, so he's going to be able to play through that anyways, but being able to attack and then setting another card and passing here. And we see them draw the Chaos base, so we're going to activate the Book of Moon, flip the Rise Heart face down there. Unless they have a response, I don't think they have anything that can really stop this. I guess a Forbidden Lance would be pretty good here. You're going to chain the Rise Heart. It's going to be banishing the, uh, what? We're going to see a Chaos Base being activated, getting rid of the, uh, getting rid of the Gamma in the hand there. I guess, uh, is it truly a dead card? Then we will search for the Collapse, or the Black, I should say. And we know this combo here is going to be able to get for a, uh, for either the Romulus or the uh, um, whatever you want to call there. We're going to activate Preparation, summon out the Fenrir here. It's going to be pretty good stopping those boards, being able to stop that uh, that Seals from summoning. But they do have the second Book of Moon here. And uh, flipping the Fenrir face down. We're going to see Judgment be responding to that. I forgot they could have Judgment in the first one there. Um, Pagan going out of 4,000 life points, you know, really banking on this Fenrir doing a lot here. See them link away into the Striker Dragon. Be able to activate the effect of the Black, searching for the White. I guess you, you definitely don't Fenrir here. We're going to see the Ogre is going to activate the effect, and it's going to be banishing the Branded Beast. Putting the rest on the top of the deck there, but I think the deck's gonna be searched through, so it's not gonna matter very much. Maybe hoping just to like hit one of those useful one of. <clears throat> like Chaos Stasis is spawned the graveyard as well. We're gonna see a sword near activating, banishing the black here, summon itself out. Trying to get that second body on the field so that the Fenrir is not going to put that much uh, that much pressure. Cast away, no one else is in hand. He's going to reveal the white. But they don't have any other cards in the graveyard. It's an act with the effect of. The Fenrir banishing the sword near there, but they don't have any other darks in Grave. I'm just going to scoop it up there, realizing they don't, unfortunately, have enough gas. So, moving on to Game Theory, we're going to be seeing that uh, the Bestial Dragon Link deck is going to be choose and go first. I wonder if uh, if they kind of felt like those that double Book of Moon. Um, I guess that Ogre really was unfortunate, but uh, I wonder if they should have like set that Book of Moon and maybe done it differently. At the same time, you know, you know that your opponent can just probably arise heart during the end phase, pop that Book of Moon anyway, so it may not have had any actual window of activation. So maybe that's why we saw the uh, the activation of it being held into the hand, so they can't just pop it off that, which would have kind of been rough. But we'll move on to game three here. Um, I think this could be really anyone's game. The thing that I like about Dragon Link, which I think it make, makes it kind of fair as much as a combo deck as it is, is like you have hands where it absolutely just bricks. If there's like there's hands where you have like three bestials in hand and you don't have nothing. I mean, if you have Lubellion, then you have Lubellion, and it's not as like big as a deal in a lot of other decks where if you like had I know like when Brandon was first being played with those two Lubellions, 
And then you kind of want to save your Lubellion for you can tag out into Galbion. We don't care as much because you are on three Al um, three Lubellion now. So I think it's kind of cool that like, it's not as big of a deal. And Lubellion is so huge. But we saw like black and white, those dragons just being able to be recurred so much. And the uh, normal summon of a metal dragon also being kind of crazy, being able to like link one into the striker dragon or the uh, the um, the pisty, which is the last guard dragon that actually isn't banned. Shout out to my boy Argapain and LP on the list. Free them, free them, Konami. You're you're not afraid. Just ban all the good other dragons. Could you imagine uh, <laughs> Argapain summoning out like Boral and Dragon? That'd be just crazy. But here we are, me seeing, you know, the all important game three with Dragon Link going to be able to choose who's going to go first or second. There is a chance they actually smoke screen and let Castiera go first. Especially when we saw that, like, Jason is on the uh, Dryden to Turbo. But I definitely think that they're gonna gonna go first here. We're gonna see a normal summon of the metal dragon, and here we're gonna see them link away into that pisty, activate the effect, be able to search for the uh, first for the red MD. Is there a world where you ash that too? You're gonna take a second to think. Banishing the Pisty to summon itself out. They'll be able to activate the effect. I, I guess this is 100% like possible for you to like hit that with Imperm. I could see that happening. But they are going to take a second to think on it. I don't think Red MD can summon from the hand, to be honest. But we're going to see the effect of Red MD activate. But here, maybe they think like, oh, if I activate this, I lose. Like we see, I think that's a Seyfert in the hand. Seyfert, Nib, they're going to activate the effect, summon out the Metal Dragon here. Linking away into Romulus, activating the effect of Romulus here, as well as the Metal Dragon. So you're able to search for a second copy. Dragon Ravine, and then the other Red MD. They're going to activate the uh, Dragon Ravine here. And uh, they're going to be able to pitch the Seyfert to dump another one, which will I think it's going to see the Lubellion, in my personal opinion. But it could be any dragon that you wish, especially with a Seyfert and Graveyard. You could actually like, send. Um, yeah, so you're going to see the Seyfert add back to the Lubellion. Lubellion effect can just send itself to be able to search for any Bistil here. That's going to get Ash Blossomed. Wow. But they have the Bestial anyways. It's going to be banishing the uh, the Metal Dragon to summon itself out. Then they'll be able to tag out for the Soranir there. Or not tag out. They're going to dump the Soranir to the graveyard, which is going to dump the Re Regained. And then we're going to see Lubellion. You're going to be putting the Beast on the field, which will be able to put the Regain on the field in their end phase anyways. Link away into the Seals. And then end phase, we're going to see the Beast summon out the regained, and we've hit that seals pass. We're gonna see prosperity being activated here, banishing uh six cards. We do see an ash blossom in the uh, Josh's hand there. It's gonna get hit with ash, not even gonna give it a second chance. I mean, you don't want to ash any of the uh the cashiers, so that makes sense. We're gonna see the unicorn being summoned out anyways here, which puts a lot of pressure on that seals board here. Because you want to be able to activate the effect to summon out your interruption, which is going to be another uh, bestial. Which is going to be bestial magnumut. I'm going to be honest. It's going to activate the effect once it tags out. Summon out the bestial magnumut so you can activate the effect. Search during the end phase. Getting that um, important stuff. Where we're going to see the unicorn activate the effect. Searching for the theosis here. And there might be a chance that we see the theosis being activated. And no, we see the scare claw. So they have a second name in hand. That is huge. And they're going to be banishing the Ogre here. So they have another name in hand, which is huge because now they can activate the Theosis and they can't just Seals and just stop it. Because so we could have seen like Theosis being activated. If Seals bounce back the uh, Unicorn, there'd be nothing that, that Theosis could summon because it can't check the 
attributes. Josh is not in a good, good place here. If they had another bestial, that'd be pretty great, but I don't think they do. They're after the effect of seals and to bounce back the dragon ravine, hoping they don't have enough to OTK. And then we're going to be seeing the unicorn going to be ripping from the deck, extra deck here. We're going to summon it with a Druus Worm. So trying to go for that double pop. We're going to banish the access code. And there's a chance here we actually see the beast effect. Yeah. So we're going to be seeing the beast effect. going to be popping the Druus Worm to pop the unicorn as well as the uh, Scareclaw. And so now they just have a dead Theosis in hand. Unless they can, they have the birth. There's, that's crazy. Man is just unreal here. They're going to summon out the unicorn. Or not the unicorn. The ogre. Activating the effect. Which is going to be able to search for the trap card. Either the big bang or the preparations. Going for that prep. And they can activate the theosis here. Summoning out the Fenrir. Fenrir will be able to search for rise heart. You de yeah, you definitely search for Rise Heart here. Why is he thinking on this? Is he thinking like to normal summon maybe a unicorn? No, you definitely go for the Rise Heart there. See the Rise Heart effect being activated here, summoning itself out. And then Regan will be able to activate the effect. And he's gonna or he's gonna activate the nib here, actually. And then Regan effect's gonna activate summoning out the uh oh, so it's chain link one regain, chain link two nib. Nib's gonna resolve sending all the stuff, summoning out that token, and then we're gonna be seeing Regain summoning out the Druus Worm here. And uh gonna be passing on that. I don't know why there's not a token on the field, but a uh, interesting choice. We're going to be seeing the Lubellion summon or send to search for the Magnemut here and summoning out that Magnemut there. Yeah, this is definitely going to be enough for game. We're going to see 3,000 and 25, 25. That's going to be 8,000 right there. Um, especially if they're able to summon any other body onto the field. That's just going to be game on board. Um, we see a hand bump, or yeah, fist bump, and then the handshake as well. You know, both very respectful players of each other. And unfortunately, they had the nib, was able to play through it, or was not able to play through it, I should say. But uh, still very nice. And they're like, oh yeah, the token, we forgot about the token. But uh, I'm pretty sure they just pop the the um the token there with the beast and that would have been game with any dragon onto the field hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like comment subscribe and if you helped if any of this was helpful for you if you guys want to see any other decks let me know in the comment section below other than that stay safe peace